hot pot, the unofficial sign that cold weather is coming and an excuse to not cook dinner for a night. Hot pot is a meal where raw meats, vegetables, and carbs are dipped into a delicious broth and quickly cooked for consumption. There are many versions across the world, but none of them has turned paying to cook your own food into such a phenomenon like the traditional Chinese hot pot. This gather around the stove extravaganza is not just a meal, but a way of life across Asia. And as lifestyles get more fast paced nowadays, people just don't have the time to prep ingredients or assemble a gathering to enjoy hot pot whenever they want. In comes these hot pot kits where a person can just prepare their own serving of hot pot in just 15 minutes whenever and wherever they want. A brand that caught my eye was Heidi Lao's Hot Pot Kits. Heidi Lao is one of the household names when it comes to hot pot restaurants, and since 1994, they have expanded to over 200 stores across the world. Today, we are trying out three of their most popular flavors of hot pot kits. The spicy beef, tomato Chinese sausage, and spicy vegetable. These kits were sold at around $9.99 for the vegetable options and around $11.99 for the beef or sausage options, but that depends on location as well. First, we are going to try the spicy beef hot pot, which I would say is the most common way to eat hot pot. The packaging is huge with a bowl almost the size of a basketball and it feels like hard plastic. There is a ton of ingredients and yeah, it looks like they break it down by packets. Also, there are some cooking instructions, but it looks like it's just pictures and not that informative. Gosh, I hope I don't lose a finger following these instructions. <laughs> So upon removing the paper wrapping, I see on the other side there is a fun graphic displaying the step-by-step -step instructions on how to heat up the ingredients in both Chinese and English. So much better than the instructions on the outside of the wrapping. Okay, first step, I open the lid and it looks like there's a bunch of individually wrapped packets for the ingredients. There's a pack of pickled vegetables. I don't think they are actually pickled, but more like marinated in preservatives. There is a pack of vermicelli, vermicelli, uh, noodles, a pack of the spicy flavor seasoning sauce, and a pack of the seasoned beef. Note it says it's fully cooked, so at least we don't have to worry about eating any undercooked meat. And holding all that is a separate tray, so I think we cook the hot pot in this tray. Underneath is a pack of utensils that includes a napkin, a pair of chopsticks that you need to assemble by connecting the two halves. And a spoon. And this looks like the heating packet. So yeah, a lot of packaging. Great for dividing the ingredients and flavors, but not for the environment. So according to the instructions, we first empty out the packets in the following order. First, we take out the vermicelli, vermicelli noodles. Next is the vegetables, and there's quite a lot of vegetables. Then the seasoned beef, and all the sauce that comes with it. This looks like a chunk of ground beef patty. And lastly, the spicy seasoning packet. And after this was poured out, the scent of mala spicy hapa hits my nose. Next, add water into the ingredients up until the maximum fill line. In the outer larger bowl, add a bit of water up until the fill line there. This step doesn't require as much water, and the remaining water in the regular 500ml water bottle was just enough for all the steps. Now the most sciencey step, remove the heating packet and quickly place it into the water in the outer bowl and then carefully place the tray with the food on top of the black container and close the lid. Almost immediately, the bowl starts hissing and steam comes out of the vent hole on the lid. I can start to feel the bowl heating up too. Set it aside and let it heat for 15 minutes until the hot pot is, well, hot. And last step, carefully open the lid. So this looks spicy. There is a ton of chili oil and spices. Even though it doesn't look like it's very hot, once you stir it up, there is steam coming out. All the ingredients look heated through, and the vermicelli, uh, vermicelli noodles were softened. 
The vermicelli was cooked just right, and the silkiness made it my favorite part of this hot pot. The spicy seasoning and broth stuck onto the noodles, and there was so much mala, numbing, salty, cuminy, star anisey, gingery flavor in each slurp. I think the flavor comes pretty close to what you can get at restaurants. Now, the beef. I'm quite confused why they use a ground meat patty instead of sliced beef. The consistency broke apart very easily, and it wasn't too appetizing to look at. It tasted like beef jerky that was seasoned with soy sauce and garlic. I wasn't the biggest fan. The vegetables from the potatoes, to the lotus root, to the wood ear, to the bamboo were super crisp and crunchy. Those preservatives really did the job. The seaweed was the only thing that didn't have a good texture and was kind of too soft. Even though they gave you a spoon, I don't think you are meant to drink this broth. It's pretty much all oil and sodium, and according to the nutrition facts, there is 1,940 milligrams of sodium in the vegetables, 2,140 milligrams in the seasoning, and 340 milligrams in the beef. But I assume those facts are if you eat and lick up each ingredient to the very last drop. And I recommend don't do that. The soup is there to just season the ingredients. But if long trips to the bathroom is one of your favorite pastimes, then bottoms up. The broth looked like lava. It turned my head into a volcano and liquid was coming out of each pore and hole on my face. Just a few bites into the hot pot and I was sweating like I just ran a mile. But the flavor was amazing and addicting. It was like there was a herb garden in my mouth. I couldn't feel my tongue anymore but I wanted more. Overall I give the spicy beef hot pot a 8 out of 10. Next up we try the tomato chinese sweet sausage flavor. According to their website, the tomato flavor is their signature flavor, and a must-have. With that amount of hype, I'm wondering if this hot pot kit version is just as good. The Chinese sausage is a unique addition to this flavor, as I rarely see Chinese sausage eaten at hot pots. The packaging looks about the same, but slightly heavier at 12 grams more. It also comes with a pack of vermicelli, uh, vermicelli noodles, vegetables, Chinese style sausage, which is a dried cured sausage seasoned with spices and soy sauce. They give you 6 bite sized vacuum pack sausages and the tomato broth seasoning pack. Let's empty the contents and again, according to the instructions, first is the noodles, then the veggies, then the sausages, and then the seasoning. Fill the water to the line in both the tray and black bowl and put in the heating pack. This time, we are going to try something different. Instead of putting the lid on, let's see what happens inside the heating process without a lid. At first, nothing happens, but then after a minute, steam starts rushing out from the bottom of the bowl. Because of science and stuff, the calcium oxide of the heating packet reacts with water to produce heat. Here we can see the heat pack slowly absorbing water, and once enough water was absorbed, it quickly inflates and releases hot steam. But as expected, without a lid, there just wasn't enough circulating heat to warm up the hot pot, and at the end of 15 minutes, it was lukewarm at best. I had to cook the contents separately on the stove. So even though this looks spicy, it wasn't spicy at all. The redness seems to be colored by the tomato paste, and it has strong Campbell's tomato soup scent. The Chinese sausage was the real deal, and not some instant cooked version of it. The casing had a snap to it, and the meat was firm in texture. The flavor was sweet and umami. Comparing the beef to the sausage, I would definitely pick the sausage over the beef. Like before, the vegetables were all crisp, and it was just like you prepared them fresh. Unlike the spicy beef version, you can sip at this soup without burning a hole in your stomach. But you might want to second think chugging down a bowl of this soup because the total sodium content is even higher than the spicy beef soup. There's 1,940 milligrams of sodium in the vegetables, 2,550 milligrams in the seasoning, and 640 milligrams in the sausage. 710 milligrams higher than the spicy beef soup overall. The tomato broth is much more complex than canned tomato soup though. It was gingery, vinegary, and had bold robust tomato flavor. 
It kind of resembled the flavor of concentrated tomato paste. But with each bite, it got a bit too rich and heavy. I give it a 7 out of 10. Next, we move on to the vegetable version. The cheaper option of the Heidi Lao Hot Pot Kits at around $9.99 a bowl. The only difference is instead of beef or sausage, they give you an extra 110 grams of vegetables. This extra pack of veggies have the same contents as the vegetable pack we already seen so far. So we have potatoes, lotus root, bamboo, wood ear, and seaweed. However, with this extra pack of veggies, it makes the vegetable hot pot the version of the highest total amount of sodium at 5,165 milligrams. It also comes with a pack of noodles and the same soup seasoning packet as the spicy beef version. If you are a fan of just the vegetables, then this hot pot is the one for you. This hot pot actually has the most content weight-wise and will for sure fill you up more than the beef or sausage versions. Flavor stays consistent and is loaded with the same mouth-watering, mala, spicy, gingery, garlicky, sour flavors that make you want to eat up every morsel. Yeah, it's full of salt, but hey, I'm eating vegetables, mom. The spicy vegetable option is the safe pick, and I give it an 8 out of 10. We explored three different flavors of Heidi Lao's self-heating hot pot kits, but what would a review be without at least one competitor? In one of the markets, I found a brand called Mo Zipin right next to the Heidi Lao hot pots, and it was only $4.99 for a bowl. It's just a bit smaller in net weight compared to Heidi Lao's, but at half the cost, was it more worth it? Unfortunately, there wasn't a single word of English on the packaging. Well, except for the Dawn litter, so this one is not exactly the most user-friendly for the non-Chinese consumer. However, if you are a pro at preparing hot pot kits by now, the instructions are exactly the same. To start it off, the plastic container and lid feels a lot flimsier. There is a pack of noodles, but unlike Heidi Lao's vermicelli, this one comes with flat noodles made from potato starch and vacuum packed for freshness. Next is a pack of vegetables, a small tray to heat the food in, a pair of chopsticks, and the soup seasoning packet. Unlike Heidi Lao's wet seasoning, Mojipin's version is one solid mass of oil and sauce. This is similar to the soup base from many Chinese instant ramens and it does look kind of scary and artery clogging. Lastly, we have the heating packet. First, we empty out the noodles and I can see from how hard they are they might require a bit more cooking time. Next, we add in the vegetables and the contents look about the same as Heidi Lao's. The soup base took a bit of an effort to squeeze out and upon ripping the packet, I recognized that smell of instant noodles. Finally, add water to the fill line, which I assume is just about... Now, add some water to the outer red bowl, put in the heating packet, place the food tray on top, Close the lid and let it heat for 15 minutes. Sorry if I sound like a broken record at this point, but the instructions are just that easy and similar. After a few seconds, the steam starts shooting out from the sides and vent hole. It kind of looks like a more intense chemical reaction than the Heidi Lao one. After 15 minutes, open the lid and enjoy. My first reaction was how dark the soup got. Compared to before, everything is now covered in a pitch black soup that filled the room with that familiar smell of spicy instant noodles. So like the Heidi Lao vegetables, this version also has lotus root, potato, seaweed, bamboo, but not woody or mushrooms. The potatoes were crisp and not falling apart. The lotus root was crunchy, but I think there was only two slices in the whole pack. There were large pieces of seaweed that were firm and not like you were eating mush. I love the texture of the noodles. They were slippery, chewy, and absorbed a ton of flavor from the soup. But the soup. Oh, the soup. Light couldn't even escape this dark soup, and neither can any salt. The soup was intensely salty. Midway through eating this hot pot, my tongue got numb, but not from the spice, but from the salt. This brand's soup base had more of a fermented bean paste flavor, and not as spicy as Heidi Lao's spicy base. It was earthy and had a bit more of an artificial flavor. It was pretty much one-dimensional and just salty and spicy. Through some high-level Google translating, I saw that the soup base alone had 5,010 milligrams of sodium, with a total of 5,208 milligrams. 
By comparison, here are the sodium levels of the three Heidi Lao hot pots. The spicy beef had 4,435, the tomato had 5,145, and the vegetable had 5,165. I also had a problem of how much oil there was, and this was the type of oil that solidifies when it cools down. This hot pot is pretty much a heart attack in a plastic bowl. Although the vegetables were good, I had to give this brand a 5 out of 10 because it was like taking sips out of the ocean. Dipping food into a pot of boiling broth is a concept as old as civilization itself. It's easy, fast, and delicious. However, are these hot pockets a better option than preparing your own ingredients in soup? My opinion is this. When you are at home and have access to a kitchen, the time it takes to cut a potato, throw in some noodles and mushrooms and meat into a broth is just about the same as the time required to heat up these hot pot kits. 15 minutes is a long time and by no means these are instant. However, if you are going on a trip, at school, at work, don't have a stove or trying to multitask, then yes, these hot pots are a great meal substitute. They are portable, convenient, and easy to make. But these are expensive, because for $10, you can get enough ingredients to prepare a hot pot meal for two or three. There are many more brands and varieties of self-heating hot pot kits, so let me know if you have a favorite or seen other kinds at your markets. Thanks for watching and keep feeding your appetite.